I'm coming in loud and clear. Might hear me on the radio. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Anybody got their ears on? Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. Tonight, we're going to continue our series on radios that I recommend. Tonight we look at base stations, used base stations. So the first video I made, we covered um, new radios that make good base stations. Two of those turned out to be mobiles, and one of them was an actual base station. So tonight we're going to look at some older radios. These radios were the kings of the hill back in the day. And the first one I want to look at is one that I've owned several of. It's a great radio, a great performer, and for people who like to modify their radios, well, this one's modifiable as well. And the first one is this one right here. That is the Uniden Washington or President Washington. Both of these are the same radio under two different names. Uniden and President had a marriage that was going for quite some time. This is like the radio. I had, I've had at least four that I can think of of these, and for good reason. So they're good, solid performers. They sound well. If you're into tuning up radios, they tune well. If you want to add extra channels to it, they're definitely capable of doing that. And they just work. They're not the fanciest sideband base station you're going to come across, but they're just a solid performer. Like, I, I had my first one for 10 years, had my second one for 6 years, and I've had some that have come and gone that I've not used as a base station. But if I came across another one that was in great shape, probably would put it inside and use it as a base station because it's just got that classic look to it big round dial for uh, you know for your signal strength and your 40 channels and buttons and knobs all around I mean just look at this radio some come with a four pin mic some come with a five pin mic connection but either one you're able to find plenty of options out there to come across base station mics you know I've got two examples down here on the table here the Turner uh, expander 5000 or 500 and, and a realistic mic which I think is I can't remember what that is a knockoff of, but it, you know they, they come under many different brands. Of course, the D104 Lollipop would work with that as well. So that's my first pick. And by the way, these are not in any particular order. These are just all great picks. And these are all going to be sideband radios because, again, if we're going to talk about base stations, you're really doing yourself a disservice not to go ahead, if you're going to buy a genuine used base station, not to get one with sideband. Now there are some 23 channel sideband radios that are out there and for guys that want to get into a base station as a beginner, yeah you can do that because there's still a lot of talk on uh, 16 and, and um, that's usually where sideband occurs on a 23 channel radio. Obviously 35 to 40 is sideband city uh, these days, especially this time of year. I had this on earlier. So they're all over the place right now. Skip is definitely rolling. I've been listening to the link in here today too as well. We've gotten uh, repeater action all the way from up in New York on that. Anyway, so that's number one. Number two, and again, not in any particular order, is the TRC-457. Never owned one. Always had my eye on uh, trying to find one. Realistic made some great radios. Well, they didn't make them, but they rebranded some great radios over the day, over the years. And that one... The 458 is um, is kind of like the unit in Washington, and the 457 is kind of like the uh, the unit in Madison, the big the big boy, you know, the bigger one with it has a digital clock, it has uh, you know some extra features other than that. I mean, it's basically the core of it though is the same. So a 457, 458, either one of those two is going to be a great one. The reason I say I picked a, a 457 is just because it does have a couple of extra features. A timer, a digital clock, and, and you know just some cool stuff there. But also it's based on what's called the 858 PLL, and, and that's another one of these chips on these older radios that was easily modifiable that you could add channels to, you could do a bunch of stuff with. I'm a purist, you know, I've ha owned a lot of radios that had uppers and lowers, and I've talked on uppers and lowers from time to time back in the 90s. These days, it's just not, not that big of a demand for it, although on a day like today where Skip is rolling on every channel, it'd be interesting to go out of band, see that export radio or out of band experience and see what's, what's going on in those higher bands. You might have better luck making contacts. So that's my number two radio there, and, and here's some pictures of it. You can see it in all its glory. Uh, I mean, it's just a beautiful radio, front-firing speaker. Just has all the bells and whistles that a radio of that era would have. And before I move on to the number one pick, or, you know, the last of the three radios, because honestly, all these are just great radios, I do want to point out that all three of these base stations lack some features that you might find on even the least expensive sideband radio you're going to pick up today. 
scan function, and I, 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 I preach this all the time, no scan in any one of those three radios that I'm about to talk about, and um, you know, no built-in Roger beep, no built-in echo, no built-in talkback. Those were all things that modern radios tend to come with now because they were features that everyone added to these older radios. And so if you have a competent tech in your area, they can turn this radio and give it to them and do those upgrades. But it ain't cheap, and it's not something that an amateur really wants to get into a radio and start messing around with because you probably do more damage than good. Okay, lastly, um, this is like the, uh, the quintessential uh, sideband radio uh, of its era. So you had the unit in Washington on one end. On the other hand, you had the Cobra 142 GTL. I've got one currently in my inventory, although I'm trying to get one of the uh, dials replaced which turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it would be, actually. But uh, another great radio. Like, this is just a good, solid, performing radio. The unit in Washington, or President Washington, and the uh, uh, Cobra 142, their insides are the same. You know, there's minor differences between the two. The Cobra has two dials. The Washington has one. But, I mean, performance-wise, they're the same radio. They, you know, the insides are the same. Personal preference. I remember the war that went on back in the 90s against which was the king of the hill because both those were still being made. I think the last unit in Washington rolled off the assembly line sometime right around 1999 or 2000 because I remember saving up to buy a brand new one and then it was gone, so I ended up getting the Grant LT instead. But yeah, those, those three radios, if you're going to ask me, and a lot of people ask me, like, hey, what radio would you recommend? Would you get this? Would you get that? For a used sideband radio, for a used base station radio, I would definitely recommend any one of those three. Now, there are tons of other ones, and I'd love to hear in the comments below from all of you, and let's just make this a very interactive series that I'm trying to make here, is that I want to hear from you what your, and now I'm not talking export radios. I think that's something I need to make clear. These are going to be radios that were 11 meter stock or CB band stock sideband radios. Obviously, there's, there's just Galaxy is the only one that's making a base station these days. But these are going to be used. So I would love for you to put in your comments, what base station did you own? Or what base station would you recommend as far as a good used base station for a beginner or someone that's just looking to have their first base set up? Uh, you know, what, what, would you, what would you recommend? I'm kind of looking forward to seeing your comments. There's probably some that have slipped you know, under the radar. I know there's a lot of brands that I'm not terribly familiar with that I see pop up on eBay from time to time that just really don't pay too close of attention to. But I'm kind of curious what your opinions are on that. So that's it for tonight, my friends. Not that long of a video, but I just want to introduce you to the three that I consider to be the best of the best back in the day. Now, you could go higher in price. You know, you could get a unit in Madison or a Cobra 2000. But I'm kind of going with price, performance, and features. And honestly, what does a Cobra 2000 really have that a 142 doesn't. What does a unit in Madison have that a unit in President doesn't? And it's just a couple of extra features that aren't really all that necessary in the modern era. You might get an extra gauge or dial, and you might get a clock, analog or digital, but, you know, <laughs> so what, right? I'm pretty sure everyone's got a watch or a phone these days and get their, their clocks. You know, you could just buy one at Walmart and put it above the the radio if it's important to you. But uh, I, I felt like those the, for those reasons, those two didn't make a list. And it's funny that I, for the TRC 457, I did actually put that on the list just because the price of those tends to be significantly lower than a Madison or a Cobra 2000 would be. So why not go for the extra features on those? And maybe I'll make a video talking about like the premium, the best of the best, like a DAX 40 or something like that. Anyway, that's it for tonight, my friends. I'm Eric, the owner. Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. I hope you enjoyed this video. The series will continue. I think next week I'll probably do, or maybe two weeks, probably do, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll figure it out. It'll be a surprise. I'll see you next time. Take care.